Hello and welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today I thought it would be a good idea to show you how to install the Omida SDN controller version 5.15. We did a video a few years back or maybe about a year ago back on how to do an install and with some recent comments on that video I thought it was a good idea to make an updated video. So here inside of Proxmox, we're going to be looking at doing this inside of a container because there's really no reason to do it inside of a VM. We could make a Docker image, but that process is gonna be different than installing it in an LXC container. So in order to install this inside of an LXC container, we're first going to need to have a template. So if you browse to your locals folder, if you have a default install of Proxmox and you go to CT templates, if you don't already have the 24.04 Ubuntu image, that's what we'll be working with today, go ahead and go up here to templates, go to search and type Ubuntu. Then you're going to want to highlight the 24.04 and download it. As, already, as I already have it downloaded, I won't be downloading it. But when it's finished, you can go ahead and close the download screen and you'll be able to pick back up with this tutorial. So from here, we're gonna go create CT and we're gonna give it a name. And then we're gonna to want to fill out a password and the confirmation of the password. All the rest of the default settings can be left alone here for the general setup. Pressing next, we're gonna to want to select the storage drive if you have more storage drives than the default configuration set up. And then we're gonna to want to select the template and the template is the 24.04 that we just downloaded. Pressing next, we'll again select the drive we want to store this in and I'll be using the default local LVM. Pressing next, we're gonna to want to give this two CPU cores. You can do this with one, but it runs much more efficiently with two. Pressing next, we want to give this 4,096 megs of RAM. And although you can do this with two gigs, the four gigs is just a little bit more efficient. Pressing next, we're going to need to set up our DHCP or our IP address for this. If you wanted to use DHCP, which may be faster and easier, but will make it more difficult for you to access the controller in the long run, you can just check DHCP. For static, we need to assign an IP address. I'm going to assign 192.168.0.202 today, and then I'm going to add the CIDR notation of 24. And for my gateway, I'm going to use 192.168.0 and 1. Yours may differ depending on your IP address schema. At this point, if we're not going to use IPv6, which I won't be, we can move on. And if you need to change your bridge, remember to do so. We'll use our default DNS configuration and press next. Then we'll hit finish. This will go ahead and make our container at this time. So our container has been created. So we'll go ahead and close this window. We're gonna select our container like I've done so here. And you probably want this to start automatically on boot. So you'll select options, go to start on boot, edit, and check this to yes. I won't be checking this as I already have mine configured as you see above, and I don't want this one for the video to start. From this point, we can select our console and we can press start and go ahead and start this container up. Once we get the login screen, we'll log in with root and the password that we configured during the setup process. Now we want to go ahead and update this container to our most up-to-date repositories and installations. I will be copying and pasting commands here and you will be able to find the commands in the video description. The first command that I'm copying and pasting in is gonna be sudo apt update and, and sudo apt full dash upgrade dash y. And what this is gonna do is make sure everything is installed to the most recent available version of Ubuntu 24.04, which is our LTS release. 
So we'll go ahead and execute this. This should take a while here as we have quite a few different repositories and software packages to upgrade. And as that came through, I saw that we had 152 as of the making of this video. I'll be back with you once this process is finished to show you the process of creating a user account and getting rid of the root user account. This is done for security as root user has highest level of privileges and is known to most people as the default setup for LXC containers. Okay, now that our updates are complete, it's gonna be time to start the process of creating a user account. And we're gonna go through that process by using the command of add user and then the username we want. We'll be using VE. We're gonna give this a password, verify the password, answer all of our questions here, and say yes, this information's correct. Then we're gonna press our up arrow and we're gonna add sudo to the end of this command. Press enter and then we can exit. Now that we've exited, we're gonna enter our new user account and the new password. With that done, we're gonna enter sudo passwd-l root, press enter, enter our user password, press enter again, and that's going to get rid of our root user account, so it's not gonna be accessible anymore. So now somebody's gonna to have to know both our password and our username in order to get into this container. It adds a little bit of security. It might not be the ultimate in your wrapping or onion layers of security, but it's a good first step. Now that we've created that, it's time to install our dependencies. And once again, I'm gonna be copying and pasting some commands. The first command that I'm going to copy and paste here to do so is gonna be the command that installs all of our dependencies. So we're gonna start out by looking at, once again, updating our repositories, and then we're going to install Java, the Java GDK, another piece of Java software, GPG, and Carl, in order to do the rest of this installation. So let's go ahead and press enter and let this software install. This next command is gonna use Carl, a piece of software that we just installed to pull down a GPG certificate that we're going to use to access a repository so we can install a database that our controller is going to use to store everything in. We'll press enter. If we need to use the echo command in order to add it to the repositories so that we can then install our database. So this will be the command that we'll enter for this. And as this command's long, I'll just go ahead and remind you that you can go ahead and find these commands in the video description of this video so that you can copy and paste these commands yourself. Now we're going to go ahead and issue a command that's going to install this database so that we can start the final steps of installing the software controller. And you'll notice that once again, I've started by doing an update and that's because we've added a new repository and we need to pull it in. And then I've issued the command after two ampersands to install the database itself. Now that the database is installed, we're going to use wget to pull in a dev file from a outside server that is hosted by TP-Link. Now, if you don't have this, and it will be shared in the comments section, you can go to the Omida Software Controller website and you should be able to find everything right here that you need to go ahead and download it by clicking on downloads, then moving over your download button, right clicking and clippy, clicking copy link address if you're using Windows. Heading back here, I already have the link address and I've added wget in front of it so we can press enter and download this from the website. Now that this is downloaded and it will download to the home folder of VE because we have no particular file directory set, we can go ahead and start the final installation step 
by issuing this command right here. Now what this command is, is it's a call to use a piece of software called dpkg. I don't know exactly what the actual name is, but that's the command. And then it uses a dash i to unpack this and it finally the deb file name. So we'll go ahead, press enter and the installation process will take effect. Now, if this installation process hangs up, which I've had it do a few times here at this screen, know oh, that usually it happens due to RAM and you need to add more RAM. So if you've used the base two gigs, that could be your problem. Once these dots go for a little while, it will give us another screen telling us that the controller is up and running and we can log in. We'll look at that process here when it's ready for us to do so. Okay, now you can see that we've got an output screen and it tells us that it's successfully installed and that we need to visit localhost colon 8080. As you know, we're not doing this on a local Linux machine, but instead we're doing this here in a container on Proxmox, so we're not gonna be able to use localhost. But during your network configuration process, we did set up an IP address and we can substitute that IP address so we can go to this. So what we're going to do here is open a new tab and we're going to enter the IP address 192.168.0.202 followed by a colon and 8088 and press enter. Now we're gonna be given this warning because it's an unsigned certificate. We can hit advanced and proceed. At this point, we're ready to start using the Omida software controller. So we can click, let's get started. You can fill out all of this information. This is where I will be leaving you today because either you'll be setting this up for the first time where you fill this all out, or you'll be setting it up as a replacement or upgrade from the older version. And you'll again, fill this all out and then you'll import your backup file from your other controller. I hope you enjoyed this video and you're able to use the most up-to-date version of Omida software controller. As always, have a good night and please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to help virtualize everything continue to grow. Goodbye.